How's it going? I'm Dr. Z's. Dr. Z's. <laughs> Dr. Z's. Dr. Z's could. Dr. Z's. Dr. Z's. Z's. <sighs> <laughs> This is Paul. Paul's a smart home guy. Recently, Paul had a problem. Oh, the Zigbee! 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 Oh, the Zigbee. <laughs> uh, Paul's problem started when Tuya, the company that makes probably the most common smart home device firmware, decided to remove support for if this then that. This made Paul very sad. Corporate greed! Corporate greed! Corporate greed! Corporate greed! We all express grief in different ways. But lucky for Paul, if this then that is not the only smart device integrator. Honestly, we're all lucky it's not the only option because it's trash. One of the other options for integrating smart home devices from different companies is Home Assistant. Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! He must really like doing that. In the next few minutes, I'm going to do my best to help our friend Paul Make the jump from trash to home assistant. Here we go. If this then that runs on somebody else's computer out there in the interwebs. To use it, you first set up your smart devices, like Tuya switches or Philips Hue bulbs. Then you give if this then that permission to log in to those devices. Then you make what they call apps to link those devices together. So when you flip a Philips Hue switch, you can open Tuya curtains. Probably. Home Assistant accomplishes the same thing, with some important differences. Instead of using the cloud, Home Assistant runs on a computer in your house. The easiest way to get started with Home Assistant is to use a Raspberry Pi. The process for getting Home Assistant running on a Raspberry Pi has been covered in many, many other videos. Each one of these videos adds something a little different, but the basic steps are the same. Download the Home Assistant disk image for your model of Raspberry Pi. Burn the image onto a micro SD card using Etcher. Put the SD card in the Pi. Connect the Pi to your network with an Ethernet cable. Power up the Pi. In a browser, go to homeassistant.local. If that doesn't bring up the Home Assistant splash page, you'll need to look in your router to find the IP address of your Home Assistant Pi. Then type that IP address with colon 8123 at the end into the browser. Once Home Assistant is installed and you've created your user and logged in, it will search your network and should be able to identify some common brands of smart home devices. Home Assistant has something like 1,200 integrations. Almost all of them represent a different smart home device company or service. A growing number of those integrations use the graphic user interface for their setup. Fortunately, Tuya is one of those. If you want to see the list of device integrations that use the graphic user interface for their configuration, go to configuration integrations, and then hit the plus. And here they are. This is a pretty good list. And with every new release of Home Assistant, it gets a little longer. If you're lucky, your devices are all listed here. If your devices are listed here, you won't have to use a text editor to manually edit your configuration file to get these devices working. All right, let's set up the Tuya stuff first. These are a bunch of things that it auto discovered on my network. Just try and ignore that. Hit the plus. Then search for Tuya. Here you put in your username and password for your Tuya account. And I don't remember mine. <laughs> this is the same user and password that you use when you set up new devices in the Tuya app. You need a country code. I don't know a UK country code. 44. I guess. If you registered with a different app like Smart Life or Jinvu, you can use those here. If you used something else, like I think there was one for Mercury and I can't remember them all. What I would suggest you do is go back and re-register those devices with Tuya, just to keep it simple. You're not going to use that app anyways. And that's it. Submit. This is going to go out to the Tuya cloud. And just that quick, it's going to grab all my Tuya devices. So these are all the devices that I have registered on the Tuya app. All right, that'll give us enough devices to play with. Then click Finish, which you can't barely see, but it's down here at the bottom. Sweet. Now all those devices are available to do things like making automations. Let's grab these Wi-Fi shades. 
We're going to use this to create an automation. We want to open the Wi-Fi shades. We have to define our trigger and it's going to be one of our switches. This is a switch. When it's turned on, then we want the Wi-Fi shades to open. That's it. Simple. Done. The other way to create automations is to go to this automations editor page. Home Assistant will try to help you make the automation. If you know the names of the devices you want to use, you can type a sentence here that explains what you want to happen. It liked what we had to say, so now we can choose which device is the trigger. It's going to be this KS switch again. This will pop up, but unless you want a second trigger, you don't need this. You can click choose individual devices and then grab the Wi-Fi shades device. And that's it. Done. Create automation. It puts in the title for you, puts your device trigger in, which is that switch when it gets turned off, and then puts in the action, which is closing those Wi-Fi shades. Click this to save it. And you have two automations here. One to open the shades and one to close them. And we made them in two different ways using the user interface. No editing text files. Yay! Now that you've got the Tuya integration configured with Home Assistant, any new Tuya devices that you add to your Tuya app will be automatically brought into Home Assistant and you can use them to make new automations. Connecting your Tuya devices to Home Assistant in this way works really well, but it isn't local only. This may sound strange coming from me, but it's okay not to flash your Tuya devices or your Sonoff devices with Tasmoda or anything else. For the great majority of people, it's just fine to leave the devices alone and bring them into Home Assistant using these integrations. A few years back, it wasn't possible to bring Sonoff devices or Tuya devices into Home Assistant without changing their firmware, but now it is. For those of us that want to change the firmware, great, it's a lot of fun, but it isn't necessary. There's a whole big world of smart home users out there, and very few of them have any desire to open up the device and change the firmware that it's running. They can still use Home Assistant and have a great experience. Enough of that, I'm off the soapbox now. Now I know that our good buddy Paul uses the Philips Hue Bridge. I don't have one, so I can't show you exactly what the setup looks like. But once you click this, you can follow these instructions to get it set up. To set it up, you'll have to press the button on your bridge so that it will register with Home Assistant. When you do that, it makes a token file and puts it in your configuration directory. It uses the IP address of the bridge, so if it changes, you need to register it again. So to make sure that doesn't happen, go into your router and reserve that IP address for your Hue bridge then you'll only have to register it once. Once that registration is complete, you should have all of your Philips Hue devices that are connected to your hub integrated into Home Assistant. You don't need to worry about this because we're using the auto discovery feature. There are still several things that I'm sure Paul would like to know how to do in Home Assistant, like using the Broadlink RM Pro to control RF plugs, connecting with Amazon Echo and Google Home, using a Zigbee bridge with Zigbee devices, and setting up the iPhone and Android companion apps. But if I tried to fit all those things into one video, it would not end well. So I think I'm gonna call it good for now. It wouldn't be a good superhero movie without a teaser for a sequel. But before I go, let's take a little poll. Who thinks Paul Hibbert should join me on a live stream? That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. 
Adios.